goes kind of crazy how much my hair like deflates after I take a shower. It's kind of funny. Anyway, what's up guys? Den Den BMX here. And today I wanted to point out something that I really don't see a whole lot of people talking about. I don't know why people aren't really talking about this. Maybe they just don't know, or maybe it's really not as big of a deal as I think it is. But I do think it's still important to point it out because I think people should know, because for me at least, if I would have known this prior, I would have probably done things a little bit differently. Today's subjects, of course, are gonna be these beautiful Epiphone Les Paul Customs. But before we talk about this one, I gotta talk, <coughs> we gotta talk about the guitar that it ended up replacing. Now, before we get into it and get all stinky, I just wanna say right away, I hope you guys go on to enjoy this video. If you do, I would really appreciate it if you let me know and help support the engagement on this video by leaving a like, leave a comment, make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already and you enjoy the content that I put out and hit the bell notification. And if you really enjoy this channel, maybe consider joining the channel membership because it really does help out. That's the best way to support both myself and this channel. And you get access to a bunch of exclusive videos you wouldn't otherwise get. A lot of them are guitar related too. But yeah, see I sped up the tool speech this time. We're already done. I drag on so often. I'm, I'm doing it right now. Anyway, so let's talk Bye. about what this guitar ended up replacing. So let's summon the Time Wizard and go back in time when Epiphone decided to totally revamp their line of guitars. They switched to the Kalamazoo style headstock. They switched out like almost every single model that they were making. And I did end up getting one of those brand new Les Paul Classics, which was very nice. I do miss that guitar quite a bit. But another one that I got right around the same time was a 2014 team Epiphone Les Paul Custom Pro. Now I'll leave the link in my bio if you want to go back and watch that video. I totally fell in love with that guitar. It played awesome. It sounded incredible. Those pickups that it had were really something else. I don't know what it was about those Pro Buckers, but those sounded incredible. It had like all the coil splits and the out of phase thing, which I really liked. I really enjoyed the guitar. But the reason I chose it over one of the newer 2020 models was because when those first came out, there wasn't a whole ton of visual differences between these brand new 2020 Epiphone Les Paul Customs and the old Les Paul Custom Pros. Really the only difference that I could have seen was the headstock shape. And I still like the old Epiphone headstock shape and the new 2020 ones were more expensive than the 2014 one that I was looking at. So I just ended up purchasing one of those and I was perfectly happy with it. Now, if you go back to those videos everybody made in 2020 talking about the new Les Paul Customs, you don't even really have to watch the videos. You can just look at the thumbnails and you'll still see that even though they brought out the new headstock shape, the diamond for the custom Les Pauls was still the same size as the previous Epiphone Custom Pros were. And that was always one of my biggest gripes about the Epiphone Les Paul Customs, is that they didn't have like the Gibson, like big headstock diamond on it. It was just like a tiny little sharp version of the diamond. But when these 2020 models first came out, they were still using the small headstock diamond. And I think the reason that it was smaller before is because the overall size of the headstock on the previous iteration of Epiphones was just overall a little bit smaller. And I think that's all that they could fit. But then when they come out with this big new Kalamazoo headstock and they still kept the smaller size diamond, it looked really weird. It looked like there was just a lot of dead space right there. And I really didn't like it any more than how it looked on the previous headstock shape. So I just decided to save money and get the older version. And I was perfectly happy with that until I got my Epiphone Prophecy SG. And lo and behold, it came with a full-sized headstock diamond and I done shitted. I was blown away. I was so stoked that an Epiphone finally came with the full-size headstock diamond. I know like the old like 80s models or whatever they are also use the big headstock diamond. But in my days, back when I was a kid and had a Zach Wilde Les Paul Custom, I hated that tiny little headstock diamond that it had. But then I get my Prophecy SG. All of a sudden it's got this massive, girthy, Gibson-sized one. And I'm staring at it the same way Riley Reed stares at other girthy things. And for a second, I was just like, maybe it is just on the prophecies that they have the full-size headstock diamond. So I go and look at people's like reviews of the prophecy series. And I saw that even the prophecies did have the small headstock diamond, but now I'm sitting here with a prophecy that has a full-size headstock diamond. So I was started to think maybe it was just the first wave of customs and prophecies that had that small headstock diamond. And then I ended up pulling up Sweetwater, looking at their latest inventory of the new 2020 customs. And lo and behold, all of a sudden those have the full size headstock diamond too. And I suddenly got very excited and a little annoyed because if you're gonna switch to these big old Kalamazoo headstocks, why don't take advantage of all that extra space right away and just even on the first wave, have it come with the big headstock diamond. The fact that so many people got these first waves of them and they had the tiny headstock diamond made me not really want the new ones. Like one of my absolute favorite things about the Les Paul Custom that I think makes it a Les Paul Custom is the ginormous headstock diamond that comes on the Gibsons. So if I had known right away that these new Epiphones are gonna come with a full Gibson sized headstock diamond, I would have just gotten one of those right off the bat. But once I realized that these two also come with the big pointy boy, I started saving up 
to get one of my own. And I actually ended up making a video unboxing and playing this guitar that you can also go check out. That one didn't do as well because I was an idiot and tried to make it like a mystery unboxing and that just bombed because I'm not a very popular guitar YouTuber. And I think the reason my original Custom Pro unboxing and demo did so well is because it was right around the time those new customs came out. Ever since then, I really haven't seen a whole lot of people point out that these Les Paul Customs do come with the full-size headstock diamond now. And I think it's important that you point that out because it's one of the bigger differences. Because yeah, while these new ones have the classical wiring and they switch from rosewood to a proper ebony fretboard and they have the new headstock shape, that's all cool, but it really wasn't enough to entice me to get one of these new ones. But for me personally, you know what would have been? If I had seen that right away that these come with the full-size headstock diamond. That would have totally changed my mind and would have totally compelled me to get one of these new ones instead of getting the old Custom Pro. Not saying that I regret getting the Custom Pro at all. I really, I don't want to like downplay that at all. That is an incredible guitar. I really enjoyed that guitar and I still miss it even though I sold it. But the good news is I sold it to my friend Jager and he's actually going to lend it back to me here pretty soon so that I can make a proper comparison video between the new Epiphone Les Paul Customs and the old ones. So maybe hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you know you could be one of the first people to see that video when it comes out. And yeah, I really just wanted to point that out because for for me personally, that is one of the bigger differences that I think makes these new 2020 Epiphone Les Paul Customs better. Now while yes, this is just a cosmetic thing, I think we can all agree that even though your love for a guitar should be dictated mostly on how it plays and how it sounds, visuals are like the third most important one. Yeah, it can sound amazing and play amazing, but if it looks like a lemon, it's just going to look like a lemon. But if you have a guitar that plays well and sounds well and you love the look of it, it's gonna, you're gonna be hard pressed to keep the thing out of your hands. But yeah, I think that's gonna wrap up the little talking section of this video. That's just something that I really wanted to point out because I really haven't seen a whole lot of people talk about it. I think for the rest of this video, we're just gonna plug this thing in and doodle around, jam a little bit, and appreciate the visuals of this guitar and the sounds of it because, man, with this Neural DSP Gojira plugin that I have, it's... Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the playing. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.